Good morning, sixth grade. It is Monday, April 26th. Let's begin in prayer. Uh, this week, we are going to pray um, a prayer of St. Catherine of Siena. So let's get started. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Draw it to you by your power, and grant me char charity with filial fear. Preserve me, O beautiful love, from every evil thought. Warm me, inflame me with your dear love, and every pain will seem light to me. My Father, my sweet Lord, help me in all my actions. Jesus love, Jesus love, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, so here's your warm up. We're just gonna do a little bit of computation with decimals this morning to kind of warm up our brains. So go ahead, pause the video, solve these two problems, and then we'll get going on today's lesson. All right, so for both of these two problems, these are problems you could very easily do on your calculator. And quite honestly, when you're doing these calculations with area and circumference and the things that we're gonna be working on this week, I'm generally okay with you using a calculator. Um, however, with these two problems, let's do them by hand because I think it's good to practice that periodically. And then if you wanna check it with a calculator, you could do that too. Calculators aren't perfect. Um, you have to remember that it is a tool that you can use, but you need to know what operation you're trying to do. You need to have a general idea of what your answer should look like because it's very easy to plug the wrong numbers in at times in a calculator, okay? So let's take a look at these two numbers. Um, and I am gonna do a mental estimate just to make sure I kind of have an idea of what the answer should be. This first problem is gonna be, it's about 12 plus four, right? So it's gonna be about 16 is my answer. And again, you should do that regardless of if you're solving these problems by hand or solving them with a calculator. Make sure your answer makes sense, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and do the addition. When we're adding decimals, we need to line up the decimal point. And so I'm going to set this up vertically and line up my decimal point. Now I, I've got some empty spaces, so I'm going to go ahead and put a zero there. And you know, you could put a zero out in front too, but you don't have to. Um, it is important, this one on the right though, to make sure that you have that decimal point lined up and you know that I'm going to add five plus zero, okay? And then eight plus four is 12, carry the one, nine, carry down my decimal point. And then 11 plus 4 is 15. So my answer is 15.925, which makes sense. That's reasonable. Okay, I said it was going to be somewhere around 16, and my answer is pretty close to 16. Okay. All right, now let's look at the second problem here. So 6.26 times 3.5. And again, you can solve these on your calculator when we're doing area problems, but we're gonna do this one um, by hand. And again, I'm going to estimate um, ahead of time. This one's a little harder to estimate just because 3.5 is right in the middle of three and four. Okay, so I could say, well, this is six, about six times about four. Okay, it's gonna be about 24. Now I'm estimating on the high side because I rounded up with that 3.5. So keep that in mind, you know, that you might end up with um, a number that may or may not be super, super close to your estimate, okay? But you have to look at what you did for your estimate to see if your answer makes sense, okay? All right, let's do the math. So 6.26 times 3.5. When we're multiplying, we don't need to line up the decimal point. We're gonna set this up just like we would solve um, a multi-digit multiplication problem. So six times five is 30. Five times two is 10 plus three is 13. Six times five is 30 plus one is 31. And then I bring over a zero and then do the second digit there. So 18, seven, 18. So zero, 11, 9, 11, 2. And I have one, two, three decimal places. So I go one, two, three, and my answer is 21.91. Okay. And again, my answer is a little low compared to my estimate, but that makes sense because if I would have, if I would have rounded down and said, okay, let's say this is three instead of four, I would have gotten six times three, which is 18. And look at that, my answer is right in between those two estimates. So I think it was a good estimate and I think my answer is reasonable. Okay, let's go back to today's lesson. 
All right, so today we are going to, we're moving on to um, calculating area and circumference of circles today. And so the essential questions that I want you to think about is I want you to think about how are the diameter of a circle and the circumference of a circle related. We're going to talk about that, so keep that question in your mind. And then we're going to be a little bit today, but mainly later in the week, we're going to be looking at how we can use the different properties of shapes to solve more complicated problems. We've been talking about very basic shapes. You know, we've talked about rectangles and triangles and trapezoids, and today it's circles. What happens when we have shapes that don't, that don't look just like one of those shapes, but maybe is a combination of those shapes? And so we're gonna be solving problems with more complicated shapes later in the week, okay? But today specifically, we are looking at the circumference of a circle. Okay, so what? So before we talk about circumference, um, we need to talk about this constant called pi. Um, th that's this symbol right here, and I'm sure you guys have seen this um, at some point. That symbol, and said, well, even if you don't know what it is, you've at least seen it. I hope. Pi, okay, that's what we call that constant. It's a Greek letter, okay, that's been given to represent this particular number, okay? It's a constant, it's a number, okay? That's what we mean by a constant. It's a ratio that's related to circles. So anytime you see pi, it's related to circles, okay? What it is actually is this third line down is it's the ratio, okay? Remember a ratio is like a fraction. It's the ratio of the circumference of a circle, which is the distance around a circle, okay? So if I have, um, I got a lid here from my vitamin bottle, it's a circle, okay? The circumference is the distance around that circle, okay? So pi is the ratio of that number compared to the diameter of the circle. We learned about diameter last week. The diameter is that distance across the circle that goes through the center. Okay, here's what's really cool about pi. It doesn't matter what circle you have, any circle, okay, any size circle. If you measure the circumference of the circle and you measure the diameter of the circle and you divide those two numbers, you are always going to get the same number. Okay, now I say that and you might go off and try this as an experiment and say, well, I didn't quite get the same number. It depends on how accurate you are. You have to be very precise, okay? But if you are very precise in measuring that circumference and that diameter of all kinds of different circles, if you divide those, you're always going to get um, this ratio, this number. So if you look down at the very bottom here, we approximate pi to be 3.14. It's about 3.14. In reality, it's an irrational number. It's a number that it doesn't, it's a decimal that doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. It goes on forever, okay? It's, a, it's a, an irrational number, but we approximate it to be 3.14. And so when we see pi show up in equations, and again, since pi is related to circles, we're gonna see it in equations for um, involving circles, we use 3.14 as an approximate. If you plug in pi on your calculator, if you have a pi button on your calculator, you're gonna see that it has many more digits than that. It, um, I know the first few, it's 3.14159. It goes on forever. And there are people that have memorized pi out to like hundreds and thousands of digits, okay? You don't need to do that. Just know that it's about 3.14. Okay, the history of pi is really cool. It was discovered about 4,000 years ago from with ancient mathematicians. We're doing experiments and about with circles and they found this constant. They found this relationship um, between the circumference and the diameter of a circle. And it applies also to the area of a circle, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Okay, enough about pi. So let's talk about circumference. Circumference is the perimeter of the circle, of a circle. It's the distance around a circle, okay? It's when we talked about perimeter, I mentioned it's like putting a fence around something. Circumference is the same thing. It's like putting a fence around a circle, okay? There's a formula that has been developed. It was developed by those ancient mathematicians, okay? To calculate the circumference of a circle. If you know the diameter, okay, or the radius, because we know that the radius is just twice the diameter, right? The, the radius is the distance from the center circle out. 
the diameter is the total distance. So the diameter is twice the radius. We know that circumference, the distance around a circle, is 2 times pi, which is that constant, which we said we use as 3.14, times the radius of the circle. That tells us the distance around a circle. That tells us the amount of fence that we need to, to put a, a fence around a circle. OK, so what we're doing today is just solving problems to find circumference. OK, if I can give you the radius or the diameter of a circle, you can use this formula to calculate the circumference. All right, so let's solve a couple of examples. OK, so I have a circle and I know the radius of my circle is seven centimeters. I want to find the circumference. I want to find the distance around the circle. So we use the formula for circumference. C is equal to 2 pi r. So the circumference is equal to 2 times pi, which I said we can approximate to be 3.14 times the radius, which is 7. And now you can plug this into your calculator, or you could do it by hand if you wanted to. So 2 times 3.14 times 7 is 43.96 centimeters. OK, circumference is like perimeter. It's a distance. So its units are just units of length. OK, it's length around a circle. And so it's this answer is 43.96. What you're going to find is if you're using your calculator and you're using the pi button, your answer might be a little bit different than mine because it's got a different value for pi, a different approximation of pi. That's OK. When you're taking, um, doing a, a homework assignment or doing a quiz, the problem will tell you if you need to round to a particular um, particular um, number, place value. What I would recommend is if you are not told what to round to, if you don't, if the problem doesn't say round it to the nearest tenth or the nearest hundredth, round to the nearest hundredth for now, OK? And then if you have a problem that tells you to round it to the nearest tenth, then you would adjust, OK? All right, let's do one more. Let's do this one. I've got a circle. In this circle, though, I'm given that the diameter is 9 centimeters. OK, so I, and I want to find the circumference. So find circumference. So the circumference is 2 pi r. OK, but I need radius. I was given the diameter. Well, if I know the diameter is 9, the radius is half of that. OK, that's a good thing to remember. The radius is half of the diameter. So 9 divided by 2 is 4.5 centimeters. That's the radius. And I'm going to plug that into my formula. So the circumference is 2 times pi, which is 3.14, times the radius, which is 4.5. And then if I plug that into my calculator, I did 2 times 3.14 times 4.5. And I got 28.26 centimeters. And that's the answer. OK, so there's a couple examples of how to find the circumference of the circle when you're given either the radius or the diameter. So your homework assignment is a worksheet where you're doing exactly this. You're given um, the radius or the diameter of a circle and you need to find the circumference. So complete all eight problems on the worksheet. Think about how you feel about today's lesson. Be sure and talk to your tutor if you've got any questions. Um, and then we'll see you back here tomorrow. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.